All right, I'm going to be talking today about will the clinical laboratory be automated in our lifetime? I get asked this question all the time in my comment section, which I do not mind you guys, of course, because I want you guys to ask questions. But since I get asked a ton, I'm just gonna make a video on it. So here's only from my opinion though. This is not factual, actual science. So eh. This is not factual, actual scientific evidence. I don't think these are words, but that's okay. Got me my latte latte, let's drink some up before we go in. Can't tell I'm already running out, but love me some matcha. All right, for my opinion, I do not think the clinical laboratory will be completely automated in our lifetime. So why do I think that? The reason I think that, let's go back a couple years. Let's go back about 40. There was tons of people who are needed in the lab. If you guys don't know the ethics of the lab and what went on about 40 years ago, people were able to smoke in the lab. People were able to not wear gloves. You mouth pipetted. I know the thought of that. Oh my gosh. But since then, there has been less of a need for people in the laboratory. And there isn't as many programs out there. So you may be thinking, then why do you think, Rosa, there will still be a need for people in the future? So I do think there will still be a need because of the fact that since there are less programs now, there's less scientists out there. A lot of people are in the retirement age from talking with coworkers and just other people that I work with now who have been in the lab for a very long time, who have seen like big changes, you know, lots of mergers, people who, like I said, are retiring, you know, maybe getting out of the field and doing something else. There is a big need for scientists right now and they can't fill jobs. Like companies are not able to fill jobs. It's so hard to find people with this degree. And a lot of times now they're taking people who don't even have this actual degree or the certification and will help sponsor you later on to get it. Because like I said, there just isn't enough people out there to fill these positions. And I know a lot of things now have become automated. If you can see from my like day in the life of a clinical lab video, I'll link that up here. You can see we use tons of machines each day to run patient samples. But who's the person who puts the sample on? Us. We don't have machines that actually put it on the machine. And there's also different things too. Like I don't know if there's any machines out there that relabel. I'm sure there is. But most of these big companies aren't going to be paying for that because that's an extra cost out of their pocket. They don't know how well it's going to work. There's still a need for scientists because you still have to look under the microscope or on a computer screen to differentiate cells. There's still certain tests that have to be run manually in order to get a result. Even though you do have machines that read a lot of things, like we have the MALDI for micro that looks at the organisms growing on a plate. You put that onto a little like disc type thing and it'll actually tell you what's on there. If it's E. coli, if it's some type of other bacteria, it will tell you. And there's so many great advances in science right now. And you know, everything is changing consistently. There's so much more that is making science go faster. It's making results more accurate, which is awesome. But we still need people to answer the things that may go wrong because machines always have issues. There's always troubleshooting to do. There's people who have to do maintenance on the machines. And for now, I do not think the clinical lab will be automated. Also too, there can be errors in patient results that come out of the machines and the doctor or nurse may have a question and you can't really have a machine answer that question for you. Like they're not gonna go ahead and talk and tell you what's going on. And I don't think they would know all the full details that a scientist would know in order to answer those types of questions. Because there are times when a doctor or nurse will call down and ask you, hey, um, I want to test for this. What kind of materials do you have in the lab in order to, in order for us to collect the sample? They're not going to be able to answer that through a machine. And so that's what you're there for. You're there to answer those types of questions. You're there for when the doctor or nurse calls and asks, hey, um, I have to redraw this patient. What tubes do you need? What test do I need to rerun? Um, they have a high PT. Do I need to rerun it again? High D dimer. Let me get another blue top tube. So there's certain things that they will ask and you 
are the only person that can answer that because you have the education, you have the training, and it's just more easier for you to answer that question and then for technology at some point in the future to answer that because it's gonna suck. And hopefully, not in our lifetime, and I don't think it will in our lifetime, but maybe in the next lifetime, maybe the lab will become completely automated. I'm not sure. I won't be around. You might not be around either. So we can't really tell the future. But hopefully this answers your question. This is just my opinion on it, of course. I mean, you can go ahead and do your own research, want to find out what kind of advances are being done in the clinical laboratory, what kind of machines are out there now, which there are tons that are making it a lot easier and more accurate results. But you're still going to need that lab person to fix machines, troubleshoot, do QC every day and answer questions that doctors or nurses have that a machine would not be able to answer. So thank you guys again so much for watching this video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay updated when I post. I post every week. And thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope to see you again here soon. Oh,